All right, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Yuzo, and uh, today uh, going to be our third lecture in this uh, ECE 341 this semester. And the first of all, can you guys hear me well? Uh, as well as watching my uh, shared screen with my notes. All right, thank you. Thank you for the information. Okay, let's start. Okay. Uh, here is trying to review what we have learned and uh, also uh, something we view learn uh, along uh, the this lecture as well as the upcoming lectures. Okay, so we're in module two, okay, uh, talking about basic power and the per unit systems. Okay, uh, obviously we have three single phase and three phase to learn respectively. Okay, now we're in the single phase. And we learned the instantaneous power, uh, lowercase p of t. We also learned average power. Every power is nothing but active power. Okay, this is the first concept you want to keep in mind. This is the same thing. Active power is what? Is average power. Okay. And second, we learned the corresponding reactive power because active and reactive, they always come with as a pair. Okay. Active and reactive. One thing I think I forgot to emphasize at least last lecture, which is active power and reactive power equals to the magnitude and the magnitude only of the voltage RMS times the magnitude of the current RMS value, and then times cosine theta. This is the active and reactive power is again magnitude of the voltage RMS value times current magnitude R mass value times sine theta. Okay, uh, remember this, there's a magnitude in P and Q. And the theta is so-called impedance angle, uh, equals to the voltage phase angle minus the current phase angle. All right, so this is the uh, P and Q respectively. So what do you wanna learn from this? Both are what? Real number. Because we will see the voltage and the current are, are both phasers. And later on, the apparent power is going to be a complex number, which is a phase as well. OK? So you're expecting to see the phaser or complex number as a result for apparent power. However, you must have a real number as the result for active power and reactive power. Okay, real number. Of course, reactive power by real number, what I mean is a real number times a J. Of course, you're going to have a J here. Of course, you're going to have a J. Okay, the reactive power is reactive in memory in memory number, including J. However, by using V RMS magnitude times I RMS magnitude and times sine theta, the result must be a real number. Okay? Besides of the J, that, that's what I mean, okay? So this is very important. If your calculation results end up with a P equals to five plus six J, no way for that P to be right. Same for the Q, does it make sense? Again, has to be a real number. Okay. Has to be a real number, okay. respectively. Okay. And then we learn the uh, concept of the uh, power factor. Power factor is equals to P over the magnitude of a parent power, which has not yet been instructed, but uh, it equals to the square root of P squared plus Q squared. If harmonic free, it is also equals to cosine theta, okay? Uh, because uh, uh, if you review actually the power factor, including uh, two concepts, one is distortion factor, another is displacement power factor. And if uh, there is no distortion, that means um, harmonic free, and that further means Power factor equals to cosine theta. That's enough. Okay. In this course, we are assuming 
harmonic free uh, through the entire course. Okay, uh, keep this in mind. Okay, this course, the entire course, is assuming there's no harmonics involved at all. Okay, otherwise the power factor is not equal to cosine theta, not only equals to cosine theta. Okay, and today we will learn uh, another factor which is called load factor. And generally speaking, load factor was introduced uh, at the module E, module one. However, I, I'm trying to put the power factor and load factor together to see what, what is the difference. Okay, what is the difference between the two factors? Okay, and how to correctly understanding them. Okay, uh, that's why I'm putting them together this time. Okay. And then followed by, of course, the most important one, a parent power, a parent, parent power, which represented by S, capital S. Okay, so all of these things we have learned so far, assuming one, harmonics free. Second, by VRMS and IRMS, we are talking about phasers. Right? We are talking about phasers with a certain amount of magnitude and a certain amount of phase angle, okay, phasers, which obviously also equals to a equivalent complex number with real part, and the memory part, okay. And uh, of course, remember to use our mass value, okay. You use our mass value, not peak value, okay. Not peak uh, value, okay. Not value, not peak value. All right. And now let's uh, follow this uh, uh, overall picture and to talk about the load factor. What does it mean by load factor? These are the, uh, the notes we ended by a week ago, and we're going to continue here. Power factor as so, and next, let's talk about load factor. Okay, load factor, two factors. LF, what is load factor, first of all? Uh, load factor is to... to assess the use of the power. The key is the use. That's why it is called load factor. Okay. It's evaluating is good or bad. The load is, okay, not source. It's talking about is good or bad, the load is. Okay. How good? Or bad. The load is. It's trying to answer this. And the uh, calculation equation is fairly easy. Is equals to average power divided by the peak power. Here again. We're talking about the power used yeah, to a load. How much power you used as your average power, and then power, how much power you used as your peak. Okay, and talking about these two power, and the division between them is equals to load factor. Is equal to load factor. And uh, let's let's have a, a, a simple example to 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 see uh, what does it mean. Yeah, very simple one. Say a, a load in a day consumed, consumed power of 10 kilowatts. During ten hours, and average power of twenty kilowatt
Oh, I'm sorry. This is a, this is 100. This is a 100 kilowatt during 10 hours and average power of 20 kilowatt for the rest of the day. Find this load load factor of the load. Well, how we do it obviously is uh, find every power through the day. Okay, through the day because we are talking about the load powers through this entire day. Okay, and also find the peak power of the load through the day. Okay. So let's see. First of all, what's the average power through the day again? Through the day. Okay. Every power equals what? Any idea? It's a ratio, right? It's a ratio. It's an something in numerator divided by denominator. Denominator is what? Is the total of the time length of the day. Does that make Four sense? Hours. 24 hours. Very good. There we go. You got it. You got it from two. Then what is the numerator then? Denominator 24 hours time length of the day. Very good. So how about a numerator? Um, total power used for the 24 yep. hours. Exactly. Power used for 20 hour. Exactly. So what do we do here? Then? Uh, I got 12. How about 100 kilo times 10, right? This is 10 hours used. Plus the rest of the 14 hours. All right. 14 hours. How do we find those the rest of the day, which is 14 hours power used? Does it make, make sense? So if you're in those 10 hours, that, well, obviously it doesn't matter which 10 hours. Just, uh, we know 10 hours, we, 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 we know. Constant, constantly consuming 100 kilo. The rest of 14 hours in that day, averagely consumed 20 kilo. So, Numerator now is the total power consumed in this day, which is four hours, yeah, 24 hours, right? So divided by deadlines, then for the save time for the uh, algebra, it turned out to be 53 kilowatt, 53 kilowatt. This is the average power. How about peak power? A peak power is a little bit uh, tricky, I would say. But actually, in your head, your impression is supposed to be like this, right? Let's say this is the hour. This is the power consumed. Right? Say this is 10, and then plus another 14 equals 24. Through this day, you have 10 hours, like uh, 100 kilo. That makes sense. The rest of the 14 here, this span is nothing but 14 hours. And during which we have average 20. 20 is, is about here. Does it make sense? It's pretty much the power curve in black. So who is the peak power? Just 100 kilo. 100 kilo. So if the power just like shot up at one hour to like a thousand, that would be considered the peak power as well? Shut off. Say, say that again. Shut off. No, like let's say the power, I don't know, went up to like a million kilowatts in a flat second. We would consider that peak too? Yes, we, we, we will. We have to. We have to. Okay. Uh, and of course, consumer energy won't 
take you as his uh, future customer anymore. Of course, he they, 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 they're gonna quit the contract. Okay, it's such kind of a terrible load they, they don't want to serve anymore. Trust me, this load is absolutely very as terrible. Because from the formula here, you can tell your peak is too big, or say way bigger than average. Then what does it mean? Low, low power factor, extremely low. Extremely low load factor indicating, clearly indicating the bad, very bad customer, very bad load. Okay, and the, the consumer energy doesn't want to serve you anymore. Okay, for sure. Does consumer yes. charge you based on load factor? Very good question. Anyone can answer this question before I present the solution. Does consumer energy charge the customer based on the load factor? Anyone, anyone know? Is, is there anyone here working for consumer energy for the time being as intern or even half-time, full-time job? Anyone? This is a question for you. Obviously. Anyone? Anyone can answer um, this question? Yep. Doesn't your meter just measure the amperage that goes through to your house? And therefore? It measures in amp hours? Actually, here is the answer, okay? If you're talking about how they charge you, they only check your meter. You spend, or say you, you consume more power, you're going to be charged more. However, how the load factor kick in to the picture to affect, or say how it affects the charge in charging the what? Unit price of the electricity of this area. You have a very bad load. Guess what? You, I can charge. I can charge the electricity more as units. Uh, units price. Okay. For watts, I can charge more. This is how. This is how affecting the uh, the price. And that is the same price for homeowners and for businesses or large consuming businesses. They they also <laughs> both sides get charged for the load factor. As far as I know, it is just not com just not complex power. Uh, typical households don't get charged for complex power, right? Households. Well, first thing, uh, first thing you need to understand, you have a complex power. However, the power company is responsible of, or say, working together with the customer to, to correct the power factor. This is the power factor thing. The correct the power factor so that you don't have much reactive power. You're not consuming too much reactive power even though your load is, is doing so. However, you have a power correction thing there to guarantee that the power you're receiving is, is basically real power or say power only. Okay, they, they're charging for that. There's no charge rate for reactive power there. Never heard of it. And by the way, uh, here's the another thing I think uh, very important Okay. Excuse me for, for a second. Active power, what is a unit? Reactive power, what is a unit? And as well as uh, parent power in, in a little bit future. So what is a unit for active power? What? Okay, what? What? W? What is the active power? Uh, what is the uh, unit for reactive power? Volt ampere. Volt ampere reactive. So VAR. V A R VAR. V A R VAR as the unit of reactive power. Abbreviation of volt ampere reactive. Okay. And what is the unit 
for S, a perm power. Volt ampere. Okay, volt ampere. So you're going to be charged based on W. What? Okay, you're going to be charged based on the W. Your load is introducing this guy, VAR. However, it new need to be the power factor need to be corrected so that you're only using the active power. Okay, you're going to be charged by active power. Okay. But the active volt amp just the same as watts because, like, when you look at your average power, it's volts times amps. Volt amps is still kind of the same thing. No, when you talk about the overall picture of the power, no. If you're talking about DC, that is true. Uh, DC is not differentiating watt and the V and the VA because in DC you pretty much have no reactive power there. Okay. However, this is AC power system. You definitely have a reactive power because of the inductive and the capacitive load. All right, and if you're talking about here, back to here, in the VT times IT, well, the watt equals to VA, that concept is basically out of the DC. Okay, The AC here, they must be differentiated. Does it make sense? So it pretty much comes down to the phase thing with the cosine and the sine is what makes them different, right? The difference between average and reactive? Uh, yes. Of course, one active is introduced by recessive load. Reactive is introduced by reactive load, including the inductive and the capacity. They have different sources. They have different costs. Reactive components are inevitable. There, so is the reactive power. However, power company must guarantee, but try very best to conduct the power factor correction to reduce the com uh, the involving of the reactive power. That uh, better, you guys. So once again, be careful. The units is very, very uh, informative. I mean, maybe in future, what I'm telling you is like this. Okay, five k var. That's it. I'm not telling you this is the reach power, right? We we have learned multiple. However, I'm not telling you which power this is. However. Your understanding this means Q equals to 5K. Right. So the unit is telling things. Yeah, it is telling things. Okay, the unit telling things. All right, and then we come back to here. And... Uh, with average power and peak power, we got load factor. Average divided by peak. And then basically equals to 0.53 load factor. What is the unit of the load factor? What do you think? Hertz. Uh, no. Or per hour. Uh, think about it. What is the unit for low factor? I would have said no unit just because we're doing power divided by power. So wouldn't the units like cancel out? Or Very no? good. That's the correct answer. Yeah, that's a correct correct answer and the correct reason as well. Okay. It's uh, power divided by power. The power cancel and the poles are what active power. Here if we are not talking. We are not talking about active power. If we're not talking about the reactive power, and uh, this is low, low, low factor uh, definition. Okay. Uh, 
definition. And, and then obviously if you want to put the uh, uh, both power factor and low factor together. Let's, let's see. Power factor and load factor together. So power factor is assessing who? Source power. In other words, the private uh, pro provided provided by the source or say by the company, or let's just keep using uh, consumer energy as the example, okay? It's, it's, the power factor is talking about how good or bad the power out of the consumer energy to us is, okay? Assessing the source power, or say the provided power. Load factor is what? Assessing the load, okay? The load power. Or say consume the power. Okay. So one is, talking about is the consumer energy are a good company and the other is talking about are we good customers okay and their thing is uh, to evaluate the numbers let's say uh, the power factor what the higher, the better, right? So is the load factor. Yeah. So is the load factor. The higher, the better. Now, what do you mean by better? Uh, better source power, and this means the better load. The higher, the better. And uh, another thing is, uh, How to make a high power factor happen? How, how to make this happen? How to make high power factor? Because as we said, the, the higher the better. Then how to make, make the higher uh, power factor happen? How? I just mentioned uh, a couple of times power factor correction. We need to do that. We need to do that. Uh, then, then how? But simply, just what? We need to make sure that, oh, sorry. That's all right, that's all right. Basically, make sure the percentage of the active power high, right? To have high power factor. This is the how to make the, the, the percentage of the active power high. The power factor correction, power factor correction. Okay, we will have a calculation example to show how it works. Okay, that that will uh, will be much more uh, meaningful. Okay. And the, on the other hand, how to make your load factor high? Think about it. How to make your load factor high? How to make your load factor high? Oh. Have a higher average power in general or have a lower peak power? Individually, the answer is no. You only make high average power, not necessarily give you the high load factor. You're only making the low peak power necessarily give you high low factor either. So how to combine this average and the peak together? Oh. Uh, get them close to equal. Close to equal. Excellent answer. And then... And then how to kind of make the work 
virilize the, virilize a power curve, how to make them close. This is the correct answer, actually. The correct answer. How to make them close. Basically, following Jaden's idea, is we can say what? Okay. Constant. How about this? Constant or flat power consumption. can make high load factor. Does it make sense? You make it constant. It doesn't matter how high or how low, okay? It absolutely different from the concept of uh, how much power you are consuming. It absolutely has nothing to do with, okay? You might be consuming just a 10 watt, very small amount of power. However, you're load factor might be terrible. On the other hand, you might consuming like a thousand kilowatts or even more. However, your load factor might be very high. Does it make sense? These are absolutely different concept, okay? Your high load factor, not necessarily meaning you're having, you're consuming power or low power. It doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't have, uh, have nothing to do with it. That, does it make sense? Is that clear? All right. If that is uh, if that is clear, we can move on. Okay. This is the uh, the kind of uh, puts load power and the power uh, power load factor and the power factor together because these two are, are pretty much. One is talking about a source, and another is talking about a sink, right? So these should be placed together. Right? So let's move on to the next one, which is the uh, parent power. The parent power. Here we go. Parent power. My parent power symbol capital S unit, as we said, VA. VA. Parent power. And uh, what is it? It just equals to VRMS times IRMS. Not done yet. The key is here, the star on the right upper corner of the current, which means what? Conjugate. It's conjugate. It's conjugate. And once again, both VRMS and IRMS, meaning the phaser RMS, rather than magnitude only, okay? So VR mass phaser times IR mass phaser conjugate. Yeah. And if you do this phaser times phaser conjugate, you're gonna end up with another phaser, obviously, another phaser. And further, if you convert this phaser to a complex number, guess what? Nothing but P plus IQ. Real part is active power. Emittery part is the reactive power. And of course, in what? This is in VAR. So this is the uh, uh, parent, uh, parent power basic calculation. And there is another two different versions of the formula you can, you can apply to calculate the apparent power as well. Let's say this, okay, let's say this. It also equals to this, two way. VRMS times IRMS. Conjugate 
if they use the Ohm's law to substitute V in this equation, they end up with what? Z times I RMS. Does it make sense? This is nothing but V, RMS, according to Ohm's law. And this guy times RMS conjugate equals to Z times, well, you can combine this two first. IRMS times IRMS conjugate equals to what? Anyone knows? One phaser times the conjugate it of itself equals to what? Anyone? Anyone knows? IRMS times IRMS conjugate. Uh, one, well, it's, 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 uh, well, no, not quite. A phaser times the conjugate of itself equals what? Anyone, anyone knows? Magnitude, magnitude, magnitude is very close. Sawyer's answer of magnitude is very close, but still not quite right anymore. Real I, uh, no, no, no real part of the I. Magnitude is very close, so uh, let me let me show. Magnitude of I itself. Square. All right, this is the uh, correct answer. Okay, so a phaser times the the conjugate of itself equals to what? Magnitude of itself square. Yeah, square. Don't forget the square. Okay. And uh, similarly, we can what substitute what s this time by Ohm's law. So keep the R mass here, the phaser again, phaser R mass. IRM equals what? VRMS divided by Z. How about that? And then don't forget again the conjugate, right? This is this is trying to substitute the IM IRMS, right? And the further, what do you what do you got? You combine this two. They combine this guy. Let me not skip the middle step. So VRMS times what? A uh, division conjugate equals to what? Equals to numerator conjugate divided by the denominator conjugate. And then what do we do here? Combine these two, right? Combine these two. And then what is the result? V R M S what? Square. Same thing. Divide by what? Impedance conjugate. And impedance conjugate. Divided by impedance conjugate. Okay. I'm using so, red color to emphasize actually very, very easy to miss. Okay. One is square, square here, square here, and the conjugate here. Very, very easy to miss. Okay. And so uh, copy the correct formula. Okay. Very the, important. The apparent power isn't just the magnitude of both the reactive and the and the uh, reactive power. It's not the magnitude, correct? It should also have an angle associated with it. Apparent power is phaser by itself. Okay. Okay. However, you might want to talk about magnitude and magnitude only. That's possible. okay. You might want to talk about the the magnitude only, like this. And then it equals to what? It equals to p square plus q square. All right. So if you're talking about phaser or say the, the or say complex power, there you go. If you only talk about the magnitude of it, of s, and then here we go. So they are pretty much two two different things. So magnitude of s is is not called apparent power, right? It's called I, magnitude of the apparent power. 
<laughs> so so phaser or complex power is the same thing as apparent power then or no? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so apparent and complex power are the exact same things. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. And then you can talk about the magnitude of it, of course, which is equal to square root of p square plus q square. And here again, what I said, both are what? Real number. Remember that? Real number. End up with this real number, of course, as well, because we are talking about magnitude. So mathematically, it makes perfect sense. Right? Mathematically, it makes perfect sense. Right? And this guy, phaser, complex number. And the V, generally speaking, use the uh, S, uh, I mean, parent power as phaser because what? You convert it to complex number which gonna immediately tell you what is the active and what is the reactive respectively. Very useful, very useful. So most of the time we, most of the time we prefer to express the apparent power in complex number format rather than the phaser for this reason, okay? That's why apparent power is called complex power, okay? That's why, it's nice. Combining all of these, actually, you have we have something else. So this guy here, it's it could be virilized as a triangle called power triangle. Let me use some paper here. Power triangle. Let's, let me. There's another new bulletin here. Power triangle. Okay. You have two scenarios. Okay, two scenarios. The first power triangle is like this. Another power triangle is like this. Both are right triangle. Okay, both are right triangle. I said, well, 90 degree here. And also the horizontal horizontal side. Is representing whom? P. Vertical side representing Q. P. Q. And also, what is it? Hypotenuse as well. Whom? Not difficult to guess, right? Hypotenuse is nothing but S. And also, it makes sense. Remember, remember this. The hypotenuse and to equals to square root of the sum of two sides square. Right? Make perfect sense. Right? That makes perfect sense. And then let's talk. What's the difference between these two scenarios? This is what this is impedance angle of theta. Right? This is impedance angle of theta. However, this impedance angle of theta is what greater than zero. This is less than zero. So is the reactive power. Active power is not affected at all. Okay? Both are positive. However, reactive power is tricky. When theta is greater than zero, look at the Q. It's, it's greater than zero, too. It's, it's above this point okay? towards the positive y-axis, right? Here is what? It's below this point. It's towards the negative y-axis. So this reactive is, uh, is, is less than zero. It's less than zero. Yeah, okay, it's less than zero. And uh, anyone can tell this and this are corresponding respectively which case and which case. Practically, what kind of load? First of all, uh, by that, what I'm saying is, first of all, if only resistive load. Then you should just have regular power, not volt ampere reactive. 
Exactly. Sorry, well, S equals to P. In other words, Q is what? Q is what? The volt ampere, which is Q. JQ. Is zero. Oh. Right. We are talking about purely only resistive load. Your power is nothing but active power. Your reactive power is zero. Because, again, resistive load is not introducing any reactive power. No reactive power of the resistor. Have you ever, in DC circuit, have you ever seen, ever heard of the, any reactive power? No, no such term. In AC, resistive load resistor itself is not introducing any reactive power either. Okay, remember this. And in this scenario, it also introducing what? Power factor is what? One. Perfect. Unity power factor, perfect scenario. It's a perfect scenario. Unity power factor, perfect scenario. Okay, the bigger the better. Remember that. And the one, it's the possible maximum value of the power factor. There's no way to beyond one. So one is the perfect scenario. Okay, this is a resistive load. Which obviously not the case here and not the case here either, right? Does it make sense? And therefore, these two are corresponding to inductive and capacitive respectively. So which is which? Anyone anyone knows? The first one here, this is inductive or capacitive. Well, I know that inductor is positive for current with respect to the voltage, right? So I would assume that on, the top one is you inductive. Can't, you can't say, you can't, uh, the, your answer is correct. However, you can't say your you induct, uh, so current is, is positive or negative than the, uh, and then the voltage. You should say the inductive current phase somehow with the inductor voltage phase, okay? The uh, correct description. Inductive load, like this. Capacitive load, like this. Right. And since John bring up the phase relationship, let's involve that as well. So to inductive load, who is leading whom, the voltage and the current, in terms of phase? Who is leading whom? Who is leading whom? Voltage well, leading current. Voltage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there is a correct. Okay. Voltage is leading current. For capacitive load, the other way around. Why is so? It's very easy to do. To, to, Actually, because remember, your theta is equal to what? Theta V minus theta I is greater than zero. And, and then, obviously, the voltage is leading the current. However, like things like this, we call it what? Lagging power factor. Okay, this is a very, very important thing. This is called leading power factor. Voltage is leading current here, in case. However, we call it lagging power factor. Here, voltage is lagging the current. However, we call it leading power factor. Okay, very, very important. Very, very important. Yeah, I, this, uh, let me emphasize this again. This page, this page of the notes, very, very important. Yeah, very, very important. And of course, why the voltage is leading the current in this scenario, and then we call it lagging. And the other way around, in this case, why is, is that? Why is backwards? Anyone, anyone knows why? 
Uh, isn't it because mathematically the impedance of capacitor, or sorry, of an inductor is J omega L, whereas capacitance is a negative J, which the J is corresponding to um, the phase format? No, don't confuse with the impedance and the uh, and the phase angle here. Okay. Don't don't uh, mess those together. No, this is not a good idea. And the reason here lagging is and leading here is is why is talking about current somehow to the voltage. Okay, we always talking about current lagging or the voltage rather than voltage somehow to the current. Okay, this is why we call this lagging because current is lagging voltage. This is leading because the current is leading the voltage. We are talking about current somehow to the voltage rather than voltage somehow to current. And why, why so then? There's a even further reason for that. Why is that? Why we are talking about current somehow to voltage rather than voltage somehow to current? Anyone know what is the reason for this? Everything has reason. Okay. Everything has reason, at least in my classes. Okay. So why we are saying current somehow to the voltage, the reason is very simple. Because your source is always voltage source, at least most of the cases. Your source is the voltage rather than current. Your current is the resultant, result, the result. Does that make sense? What do you have is a load. Where is the inductive capacity or resistive load? What do you have is the only load. A source is giving you a certain voltage. It's given. And then the load resided in a certain amount of current. Okay. So the resulted current somehow to the reference, somehow to the given voltage is how we call lagging. Okay. That's the reason. Can make uh, these things clear? Um, yes. So when you have resonance, that leads to your power factor being one, right? Yes. And so do they always try to shoot for resonance when they're working with power lines and stuff? Uh, if no other reason, yes. Shooting at the rest is the goal. That's okay. nothing but the power factor correction. You can call it power factor correction as well. Yep, 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 good, good, very good, very good, very good, okay. And uh, basically, Sawyer mentioned resonance concept. That, that's saying nothing, but if your load is inductive, you can use capacity to compensate that uh, reactive power because these two are what the opposite, right? They can compensate each other. If your load is capacity, you can, you can add what inductive load into your load to make it what? Purely resistive. Because what does it mean by purely resistive? Either you can only you have resistor or what? Resonance. Or say power factor correction. Right. Okay, either way, maybe only only resistor, which is not quite likely uh, practically. Okay. So you always gonna have some capacity for inductive. So most of the time you're gonna you're gonna do what the resonance or power factor correction. Okay, make it looks like purely resistive. However, it's not really not literally re resistor only. That's that's not possible. A typical example is what? A typical example is the motor drive, motor driver. Your motor, tell me your motor is is what kind of load? I think this is common Inductive. sense. Obviously. The motor is the most typical inductive load. Okay, the motor is most in typical induct uh, inductive load. So how to do power factor correction? Generally speaking, add the capacitor. That's why you are seeing capacitor. Okay, that's why you are seeing capacitor in the motor drive system. 
is compensating the uh, the inductive inductive reactive power. All right. So this is the uh, trying to link the apparent power, active power, reactive power, and uh, power factor impedance angle together. Okay? Because this power triangle is telling you uh, pretty much S P Q theta. Four things, uh, four things, at least four things, okay? So according to some uh, knowledge from math class, knowing any two, knowing any two out of this four, you can easily know the rest of two. Does this make sense? Knowing any two, um, you can easily know the rest of two. And of course, because of this, you might have such scenario. Right? What what kind of scenario? System one has power power factor of oh sorry. System one has power factor of PF one. Which is equal to say 0.5. Parson 2 has power a factor of 0.5 as well. However, they might mean completely different thing. Maybe this is lagging. This is leading. Okay. These two information must be given okay, as part of your answer in future exam. Okay, remember this. Okay, in the examples exercise, we will see how 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 we have those as well. It must uh, must be given. Must be labeled. Okay. Your power exactly same power factor value might mean opposite two things. Okay, and uh, correspondingly, your C to one equals what? C to two equals what? Give you guys a uh, like couple of minutes to figure out what is C to one and what's C to two, according to what we have learned. Two minutes, two minutes, think about it. Good. Obviously, uh, Kevin and Noah got the uh, correct answer here. And uh, so positive 60 degree and a negative 60 degree, right? How you got those? And so theta equals to what? 
inverse cosine power factor. Does it make sense? And then you got to get 60. However, this 60 is not the end. According to lagging and leading, you need to judge the sign of the 60. You have to, to remember to do so in the calculation. You need to, uh, again, according to the lagging or leading information here to judge the sign of this result, of this result, so that you can have the correct sign here. Okay. And according to this, obviously, you go up to this scenario, right? This, uh, this case, a positive uh, theta, and the reactive power, you're expecting to see a positive number. If this, and then you're expecting to see this, negative reactive power, so this is the uh, uh, kind of, again, link everything together, link everything together we've learned so far. Right. Uh, let me see what's the next. I think if uh, uh, no more questions, I think it's time for us to do some examples to, to, to see how, how really conduct the uh, phaser calculation. Uh, first of all, what I'm, I'm almost uh, saying selling, but actually <laughs> I'm not a dealer. I'm, I'm just saying, I this is the calculator I'm using. And uh, what I want to, uh tell you is you guys want to use your calculator to conduct the phaser and the complex number uh, calculation okay don't use your hands don't use hand calculation okay and the internal calculator this casio one is the is the best the choice for particularly phaser and complex number calculation right and uh, if you're using ti1 absolutely okay absolutely okay absolutely works Okay, just to make sure, first, you know how to use it, including how to conduct, the, how to type in the phaser or complex number, and how to convert between them. Does it make sense? Second thing you want to make sure is what? You have power, okay? <laughs> you have enough battery supporting you through the exam. Because theoretically, you're not allowed to leave your seat during the exam. Okay, you're not allowed to do so. So let's have a very simple example uh, to really polish the calculation. A very simple, but example one. Couldn't be easier, but the key is exercise the baser Total source. This means the parent power. power uh, also parent. Uh, 
12 J ohm plus six. The third one, parent power of wrench two. Uh, we can kind of, uh, I can provide some uh, framework for for question one, maybe two as well, leaving the rest for you to do the in-class exercise. But let's see uh, how we conduct this. So, Obviously, you have more than one way to do it. Okay. You have, obviously, you have more than one way to do it. Okay. Um, but to find the total source power, well, it's just too many ways. Um, I don't know which way we want to see. Uh, for example, you might want to find the uh, total impedance. Total impedance. Total impedance equals what? How about six ohm parallel with six plus twelve J, and then parallel with thirty minus thirty J? Doesn't make sense. You can do 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 such to find total impedance. Yeah, the <laughs> the calculation is a little bit uh, a little bit uh, uh, tedious, but you have to do it. After having the Z total, S total equals what? You basically combine these three together and then just the one voltage feeding one load, then total uh, total power S equals to what? Just a voltage? Source voltage? Magnitude sir, divided by Z total Conjugate. Remember, we learned this too. Well, this is if we, if we count this original one as as the first method, then this is second method. This is third method, right? Same thing. And the reason we are applying the third formula here is the uh, fact that we have a voltage source, we have total impedance, we don't have to bother the current. We just go with voltage magnitude squared divided by total impedance quantity. We done the deal, right? It can be so. This is one way. Just the, once again, this is the magnitude square. Okay, magnitude square. Right? This is the total impedance quantity. Okay. Apply the correct formula. This is the one way. Another way we can do what? We can do such thing, right? This the S total equals to S branch one plus H branch two plus H branch three. Branch one means 60 ohm itself, right? Equals to V source square divided by 60 conjugate remaining itself. Real numbers conjugate is, is uh, real number itself, right? Plus second branch means this six plus twelve j, so which means yes, magnitude squared divided by what? Six plus twelve j, right? Right. Of course not, right? Where is the mistake? I just said, conjugate. Conjugate, never forget it. Plus V square square. The conjugate here is plus 30J. There we go.
the second way to do it. In the meantime, you, you pretty much solve the uh, questions, question three as well, the branch two, what was the power? This guy here. This is the uh, question one. Any questions you have for this uh, question one? Look how to find out the total source power. Any questions? Any concerns? Comments? Um, what's there's no conjugate if it's just impedance, or if it's just uh, resistance, right? Which uh, which one? You're sixty with the asterisk on it. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. This guy is the resistor itself. Yes. Okay. This branch, we'll say, this branch is 60 itself the, without anything else. We're assuming the source isn't just DC, right? It's got to be AC, right? Very good. Very good. Very good point. Very, very good point. Let's talk about the source. First, 1.2 kilowatts is what? Uh, is it, everybody listen listen carefully. This is a very good point. Okay. 1.2 kilowatts means, first of all, RMS. Second, and it means AC. Okay. And this so, is so do we assume by default, if it doesn't specify like RMS peak to peak, mm -hmm. or we just default it to RMS? Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. Of course, generally speaking, I specify this very clearly in the exam. That's why uh, students never get conf confused in the exam. And, uh, but in, in, in the examples, actually as well, uh, the ex examples, if not otherwise being told, just assume is our mass value. Well, same thing, just like, uh, for example, what is the voltage of our outlet that we use every day? 120, right? So is 120 magnitude or say peak voltage or RMS value? Anyone knows? RMS, right? Absolutely RMS, okay. 120 volts is absolutely RMS value, okay. Is, is, uh, remember this, so the, 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 let me mention the AC, Nine out of ten times we are talking about R mass value. Okay. But again, in the exam, I I, I will specify this clearly. Okay. No, no, no views. No, no, no room for that. No room for that. Okay. So this is the source. And also this source is so nice, what? It's a real number, right? However, remember the source might be a phaser. Or say complex number. In this source, this one is very nice, just a real number only, but it's absolutely possible to be a phaser. When it is a phaser, be careful. This magnitude becomes very, very critical, very, very significant. Uh, this is the question one to question B. I will, I will try to finish the uh, the framework. You guys can keep working on it and then check the answer by next lecture. How to find the uh, the 12J, uh, 12J, which means this guy particularly, right? How to find the power of it? The voltage of 12J. RMS times I current of 12J RMS. Conjugate, once again, conjugate. Right? This is the basic formula. This is the basic formula. However, do we know this guy? Do we know the voltage of the uh, 12J? Not directly, right? Of course, we can find it, but not directly, right? It's not directly given. 
However, recalling we have uh, always recalling this, we have three different versions of the uh, power apparent power uh, formula. Okay, and in this case, we know the impedance, which is twelve J. So we might thinking of these two, and the, once again, the voltage, the current, we anyways need to find it. So how about let's try this this guy? The impedance we know again twelve J times the current magnitude squared. Is equals to the 12J times the current through it magnitude square whether it equals to what is the uh, current through it? This is very easy, isn't it? V thrust, which is one two kilovolt, divide by what? 6 plus 12J squared. Uh, once again, magnitude of it. Okay, magnitude of it. I think I can stop here and leave the rest of work of this problem for you guys to exercise. And maybe not inside of the, uh, uh, this class. Any questions regarding uh, question one, the two? Pretty much question three could be answered by this 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 this, uh, this this answer here. Is it common to say, you know, I obviously know of VRMS. Do they normally call it like when you're getting a result because we're speaking in terms of VRMS? Um, should our current should we be labeling like if we're finding the phaser should we be labeling it as IRMS or ARMS or just typically IRMS? Is that what that word is I, IRMS, yes. Okay. okay. VRMS, they introduced IRMS, and, and, and then, yes, V is RMS, then so is the I. Okay. All righty. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? Basically, we can stop here uh, in terms of the uh, lecture stuff. Uh, I want to. Uh, I mentioned two things. One is uh, I uh, published a, a so-called exam time survey as part of this module two. You need to uh, you need to do, and there's due due date due time. Very easy to do, but you you just need to do it, okay? Because without doing it, without submitting it, you won't be able to access the next module, okay? As part of the assignment in module two. Second thing is I view uh, published the uh, test run exam for this uh, class for you to become familiar with the environment. Okay, uh, not yet, but I will. I will publish it. So this, these are the two things. And once again, remember to check the uh, exam time survey and let me know your feedback. Very important. Okay. Other than that, um, I think uh, that's all for today. Um, uh, any quick questions? Uh, Kevin has already come up with the uh, answer uh, results for, for this problem. Uh, I need to check my solution. Actually, yes. Um, but I can tell you. The total, the total power is 69 kilowatts plus 72 kilo VARJ. A complex power. And the Branch two power is equals to 48 kilowatts plus 96 kilo VARJ as complex power. And the power of the 12J, 
well, I can't find it from here, but have you present by next uh, lecture? It seems uh, Kevin is fine. All right. So thank you for attending today's lecture and uh, talk to you guys on Monday. Bye now.